Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Amina and I'd absolutely love it if you could subscribe to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about things to consider before you start or think about doing a PhD. You might have watched some of my vlogs and my videos and you know, I make it look very glamorous and <laughs> I probably make it look really easy, but um, there are things that you have to consider. There are certain situations that you need to be aware of that occur during a PhD and that isn't all glitz and glam and traveling to conferences and presenting posters and then being called doctor at the end of it, there is a lot more to it. So I'm going to be running through about 10 things that you should consider before starting a PhD and if you have got your position, congrats to you. These are some things that you need to ponder over before. So firstly, are you sure that you want to do a PhD? And I know this sounds like a cliche question, but really, are you sure? What are your intentions going into it? Do you just want to pursue a career in science? Well, you don't need a PhD for that. Um, or is it that you want to go into academia and be a lecturer and have your own lab? Then yes, you do need a PhD. Is it just for the title? Because honestly, there's many times that I use my title. Even within academia, everyone has a PhD, so you don't really use a title doctor within academia. So that isn't necessarily a huge reason to do it either. So what you need to think about, and just write a list down, what are the reasons why you are doing a PhD? And are your intentions pure and you know, are you sure? Are you sure that this is what you want to do? The second point, and then probably the most important point that I'm going to say is choose your project and your supervisor carefully. It's choose them as if you're choosing a spouse. Honestly, it really can make or break your PhD experience. One thing I recommend you to do is when you go to the lab for an interview, ask your ask the potential supervisor if they could give you some time to speak to the current lab members and just speak to them one on one. Speak to them one on one and just ask them how they're finding it. You don't necessarily have to ask them what's the bad things or what are the good things, but try to probe them a little bit. If there's a particular type of flexibility that you like, like for example, not having to come into the lab at 9am every day. There are some labs that that's just the case, they have to be in the lab by 9 every day. Other labs like mine where it didn't really matter what time you came in as long as you got the work done. So you can ask questions like that. What time do you guys come in? Do you have to come in early? Do you have to leave at a certain time? What are the expectations for traveling if you don't want to? Do you have to? Um, if you do want to, is that something that you can do in this lab? Just kind of probing a little bit and you'll quickly come to find that the students in the lab will be really honest with you and they'll tell you, don't, don't come here. Um, go somewhere else. Look at the publishing track record of your supervisor as well. Just type in his or her name in PubMed and you'll see how often they publish. It's a good sign of the publishing at least once or twice a year, but if they haven't published in a few years, that does lead to you questioning where is the work that the postdocs are doing, where is the PhD work that, that's being done. So that does kind of leave a question in your mind if they're not publishing regularly. Another question to ask is how often do you see your supervisor? Because again, don't forget that when you're doing a PhD, it is so stressful and sometimes you're just doing something that you don't understand, you don't know why you're doing it. So being able to speak to a supervisor and be able to be there and know that they will be there to help you is very, very satisfying and it's very needed as well. The third thing that you should think about is are you able to self-organize? A PhD is not like a job, you're not given specific tasks to do. You're given a hypothesis or a question, a thought, and you're asked to go and investigate it. So you need to go and do some reading, find out what experiments you need to do, and there's a lot of time where you're left alone, um, especially if you're not necessarily in the biological field, but if you're outside of the kind of sciences, you are left alone a lot. So you do need to be able to self-organize, start your day, end your day, know what you need to do, know where to get your resources from, collaborate with other people, and this needs a lot of organization. So if you're not someone who can organize themselves and make sure that they're actually going to get stuff done, then maybe a PhD is not for you. So fourthly, you should be able to embrace change. Looking at the students in my lab, half of them completely had to change direction maybe two years in. So two years into the PhD, they had done all this research and it just wasn't really working out. The experiments weren't really working out, the analysis wasn't great, and so they changed direction completely. And I'm talking starting from scratch with one year left. And you need to be able to embrace that kind of change. It isn't easy, it's very stressful. Just know that everything in the lab takes time. Everything in a PhD takes time. That's something that I think I had to really adjust to. I'm a very fast paced, quick learner, quick thinking, quick doer, that's my personality type. Whereas in the lab, everything takes so 
long. Something that should take about three hours can take three weeks to get done. The temperature of the room can have an impact. The time of day can have an impact. A small tiny little concentration gradient can have an impact. You may have contaminated your gel or contaminated your samples and that can have an impact and you'll never know until you've run your gel and you've taken it. My fifth point is that you need to be able to learn how to network if you don't already and also learn how to collaborate with other people. It's definitely something that you'll be face to face with quite quickly in your PhD where you have to speak to other people, collaborate, build a network, talk to others in your department, figure out how to use equipment etc and you do need to be a people's person to an extent especially in the science field otherwise it is hard to just do everything by yourself and just try to work in isolation. It's almost impossible when you're sharing reagents and you're sharing chemicals with other people. You just have to speak to people and you have to be someone who is able to communicate with people on a regular basis. My sixth point is you need to think about your career. Now, you may enter a PhD like I did, thinking that I'm going to stay in academia, I'm going to go and be a lecturer, I'm going to be a professor, I'm going to have my own lab and, you know, all these dreams. But really and truly, less than about 4 5%, between 4% to 10% of students that do a PhD actually continue into academia, which is a shocking statistic, but it is the case. Even from my lab, there's about eight of us, I would say maybe three out of the eight, or even maybe even less than that, continued on to a postdoc. The others went into science communication, um, consultancy, uh, other academic fields, but not academia in particular, being a patent lawyer, um, yeah, just basically anything that's not academia. And it's a shortage of jobs and also very low pay for the work that you do. So make sure that throughout your PhD you are thinking about diversifying the skill set. Try to think about different skills that you can acquire that will allow you to go into a job outside of academia. Learning how to do a western blot is only useful in that specific setting. You cannot go into an office and do a western blot. But being able to, for example, code, I think this is one thing that I wish I knew, being able to code would be so useful and I was surrounded by code all the time, I just chose not to do it. The next thing is that you need to be aware of keeping a balance in your work and your life. You can get very bogged down with people in a lab, that just think it's all about being in the lab. You have to be in the lab all the time, otherwise you need to feel guilty about it. No, do what you need to do, make sure you finish your experiments, finish your analysis, and then get out of there. Go salsa, go to the gym, do YouTube, <laughs> go out with your friends, go wherever you want, go on a holiday, don't feel bad about it. Mental health is a huge issue in within postgrad, especially within PhD students. Culture of not working all the time and not having a life is all well and great when you're in your undergrad and at least then you you know even in your lectures you're with people and you're with your friends and you're still socializing but in a phd there isn't that so do make sure that you have a balance be aware of signs when you are kind of tailing off into the danger zone of being overwhelmed the next tip is that you need to be aware that you will know nothing so as a PhD student, you're probably the best of the best, you went to a good school, you got good grades, you got good undergrad grades, um, you, graduate, you graduated with good grades, you got a master's, and you feel like, you know, you're kind of intelligent, um, but then you go into a PhD and you really know nothing. Your project is a maze, you don't know how to use any equipment, nothing wants to work, everyone's smarter than you, and you definitely feel like you know nothing. Be ready for that, and I think that's something that hit me the hardest. Especially when it came to reading research papers, I just felt like I didn't understand anything. I didn't know how to decipher them, I didn't know where to begin, how much to read, what to read, how to understand what I'm reading. It was definitely a struggle for the first year, but I think speaking to people and asking people what they did, what, they, what they're reading, what they recommend you to read. Uh, the next thing to consider is that you will be so many years older than your friends and your peers um, when you graduate and when you start looking for a job. If you go straight from an undergrad to a master's to a PhD, at the earliest you'd be about 26 and your friends have graduated at 21 and they're probably in a job for the past five years and they're now a project manager or a consultant or something and you're just like okay what do i do now but that's something that you need to understand and that's something that you've decided to do um don't compare yourself to other people i think sometimes i even compare myself and i'm like oh they're doing this and they're doing that and they're in that position and i'm like but you just came out of school the next thing to consider is that Communication is everything. So everything you do in a PhD is about communicating your research. So that comes down to writing a thesis, that's to communicate your research. Making a poster and presenting a poster at conferences, that's all communication. Presenting your work 
the number of PowerPoints that I have is ridiculous. Presenting your work at lab meetings, at maybe departmental meetings. You have to publish papers, you know, regularly, maybe once in between your PhD and then once at the end. Again, you're communicating your work. So everything you do is about communicating your work and trying to get the information that you are finding and that you're researching out there. So just be aware that all the time you're constantly having to report what you're doing, report what's happening, does it work, does it not work, what can you do better, what should others give feedback to you to do. Yeah, it's a lot of communicating. I think sometimes I can get a lot like, very tiring because you're just like, I haven't got anything, what am I supposed to say? But you still have to communicate. The next tip that I want to give for those that have just started is write everything down. I know that sometimes you might hear someone say something and you're like, oh yeah, I remember that. Write it down, write it down there and then. I used to carry a notebook like this around with me all the time to write just notes down because someone in passing would just go to the fridge in the second lab, in the right hand corner, at the bottom, in the second freezer drawer and then go in there. It's a blue box with the red lid and then it's 10x concentration. Make sure you dilute it first and then use it in 2ml of this V8 and you're just like, whoa, <laughs> what? When you come to write up your thesis, you do need to be able to make sure that others can replicate your work. So if something works and you haven't written it down, then you won't be able to publish that because you actually don't know how much you used. And let's say it worked on a whim, um, like crystallization for example, you need to write down every single thing you do because you, you might never be able to get back to that crystal stage again. So yeah, making sure you write everything down. Meeting notes, suggestions from your supervisor, um, any techniques, any methods. One thing that I always wrote down was the way that um, was the microscope settings. So every time you use a microscope, someone different has used it previously. So make sure you've written down the settings that you used initially and then always just double check that those settings are correct. It may produce different results as well, which obviously scientifically is flawed. The last tip, again, this is for someone who is starting their PhD soon, is to start writing your thesis now. Um, I know that you think, probably think, oh, I've got three years and, you know, like, I'll, I'll write it later. No, start writing it now. If you've done a method and you've completed the method, write the method up. Make it into a nice looking figure, have your legend and just save that in, in a folder on your, on your laptop. Definitely do that. I think that is probably one of the most useful tips that um, I kind of learned along the way, I think. Um, no one told this to me, but I kind of learned it along the way that by writing things up as you go, at the end it really does help because you have that base that you can go from and you're not starting from a blank document but at least by writing everything up you've got everything there and if you do ever need it to publish really quickly or to write a thesis in a short amount of time you can just grab it use it and you're good i really hope this helped uh, any of you guys that are thinking about doing a phd and what to expect or if you're starting a phd in the autumn then congrats to you um, and these are some things that you should think about and that you should try to incorporate into your practice and i'll see you guys in my next video bye